All right, welcome new wave traders. In this video, we're gonna be diving into the outline and overlay of everything in trading view. Well, not absolutely everything. I'm gonna break it up into chunks here. So the first part, we're actually gonna be going through the sidebar labels over here and then the top and then the left side over here, I'll show you the tools. Uh, this is gonna be catered towards my system. So in other words, we're not gonna be using every single tool or everything available. Um, however, we are going to walk through everything that you'll need and the tools that we're going to set up. I will do everything like that here. And with that being said, let's go ahead and start it over on the right side here. First and foremost, you've got your private chats, your uh, trade ideas. All of this is just a bunch of noise. Okay. Even this says ideas stream, right? Stay away from people's ideas. You want to focus on developing your strategy and just focusing on getting familiar with how you see the charts. Okay. Not how other people see them or what other people think the market's going to go at the end of the day, they're just ideas and that's all they are. Okay. So we can basically ignore most of this stuff here. You do have notifications, but most of the time it's pretty irrelevant. Okay. This here is going to be your ideas. Uh, this is nice way to keep track of your thoughts. If you publish and I'll show you how to publish your thoughts, things like that, then you can come back to them and you can follow up and watch the video and be like, Hey, did I have this projected right? Um, and so forth. Okay. So trade ideas is pretty cool. And then we've got coming to this calendar, hot list, nothing that you're really going to be using. The data window just shows you the data over here on the chart, just breaks it down a different way. Okay. You are, however, going to be using alerts. Okay. So in order to set up alert, we can just come here and let's just this top right button here, set alert. Okay. There's also a hot key for it. Alt plus a, we're going to just tap on that. And you can see here that we can do our condition is going to be Bitcoin USD. Okay. So you can set one up for your indicators as well, such as the RSI and the composite index I have on here right now. So we'll just do one for Bitcoin. Just give an example of it. So crossing, we have all sorts of different ones that we can do. And this is because it's going to relate to RSI or your indicators a little bit differently. So like inside channel entering channel, right? Most of the time you're probably just going to use crossing up or crossing down or greater than or less than. Um, but there are multiple options for you to choose from here. Okay. So we're just going to say, let's say greater than, and then we'll put in our value. So when Bitcoin goes over $12,000, I want to be alerted. I only want this to happen once, or maybe every single time that it goes over 12,000. Okay. And then expiration, you can set an expiration date, depending on your level, uh, that you have on trading view, otherwise, uh, alert actions, we can show a pop-up notify on the app. We can send me an email webhook url okay so this basically allows it to if you have like an app that you've set up or coded yourself and you can just hook it to a webhook here most people aren't going to be doing that um it could go over to like discord too potentially so and then your message that you want it to say so you could do twelve thousand, and then you say uh time to get out okay so that's how you set up an alert and then you just go ahead and create that oh let's get rid of that webhook there create that and then it's going to pop it up there. And now you can see this little dash, uh, gold line right here. Okay. That's where my alert is at now. Okay. So that's how we set up alerts. It's a great way to monitor your trades and critical levels as well, not just trades. So you don't even need to be in a trade. You can just be monitoring critical levels that way. And we do use these a lot inside of the discord. Okay. And then we've got watch lists up here. I've actually created three watch lists for you. If you trade on Kraken or Binance, okay. What watch lists are is it's just your, your pairings and keeping organized. So let's say that you only trade six pairs, then you could create a list with those six pairs so that you don't have to always be searching for them. So we've got Binance Bitcoin pairs and I'll attach these to the button down below for you to be able to download. And then you can just upload these yourself here in order to upload. We're just going to go here and import list. Okay. When you click import list, you're just going to pick it from your files there. And then you're, you're good to go. It'll upload it right in there. So, and I'll be in file format for you. Okay. So that's our, our list that we have there. And then we're going to shoot over here and now we've got publish and we've got the video here. This is a, to record a video idea. It's literally as simple as that. Just follow the on-screen instructions and you can record your thoughts and then go ahead and hit publish. When you publish something, you have the option here down here to make it private so that other people can't see it. So if you just want to track your own charts, for your own benefit and not publish ideas publicly, you can just go ahead and hit this lock button down here and here. Other than that, just follow the on-screen, you know, directions a little bit, your category, whether it's trend, it really doesn't matter if you're doing this as a private, but if you're doing it public, then it makes a difference for people that are trying to look you up. Okay. So 
that's publish. Then we've got a snapshot here. This is a takes a snapshot and gives you a URL of your screen. Okay, and you can just hit the copy button and then go paste it somewhere, such as social media or in the Discord. And then you've also got the tweet button as well if you want to share it via tweet. You got full screen mode here, and then you've got your settings. So settings, basically, this is just where you're going to change out the appearance, the scales a little bit. Uh, I like going with the dark background, but you can change up the colors. You can put grid lines on there if you want. You can see the grid lines now. Uh, you can make them the same color as the background to get rid of them. You can make them dotted lines, dash lines. You've got session breaks, okay, which are going to break up basically the days. You've got sc uh, scales text, so if you type uh, your crosshair, see mine how it's a little bit off white, kind of gray. You've got watermark here. It's beneficial if you want people to easily pick up on what you're charting, so Bitcoin USD. Otherwise, they have to look up here in the top left. Uh, and if they're on a phone, it makes it a lot harder. So watermark makes it easier for people to identify what you, asset you're trading and charting on and the time frame. Okay, you can change the transparency of that too and make it really bright or you know obsolete or just very light. Okay, so like I don't mess with the top margin, bottom margin, right margin, the pain buttons. Okay, the scales over here. I don't really mess with this. The only time that you're really going to need to lock the price bar to ratio is if you're doing any GAN stuff. Nothing that we're going to be talking about or doing or going through in this masterclass here. We've got the status uh, line here. So again, I just, I've just i left all of this the same. Um, generic settings, your symbol. This is your body candles. So if you want to change up your body candle colors, whether they're hollow or not, uh, this is where you're going to do that at. So I like going with the red and the green, um, but to each their own in this regard. Okay, and then we've got events down here. Again, I don't mess with anything there. And trading, don't mess with anything there. So really the only things that I come in here and I've changed are the appearance uh, for the background, okay, the watermark, and then also the candles. Okay, so really symbol and appearance are the only two that I really have to mess with. So that's everything in settings there. And then you've got saving your charts here. You just click it, okay, and it automatically is uploading and saving it to um, your charts there. Okay. So you can hit control S to also save it as well. This select layout button here. Um, it's not available to everyone depending on your subscription that you have, but you can basically just split up the chart here. So let's say that I want to have two charts on here instead. Okay. And then when you are messing with two charts, it can be a little bit confusing, but when you see the blue outline, it means that I'm on this chart right now, but the time frame is over here. Okay, so if I want to change the time frame of this chart, I have to come over here. So let's say I, I go to one hour. Notice this one still stayed four hours over here. This one is now one hour. I'll show you what this little bar here means in a minute. But now we're on the one hour 15. If I want to change the time frame of this one over here, I need to click on this chart first and then change the time frame. Now I'm on the daily. This one stayed on the 15 minute. Okay, so um, can be a little tricky at first, adjusting your eyes to it and so forth. Uh, you can also, what you can also do too is keep this on the same time frame like that. Okay. And then you can use this for your indicators as well and make it a little bit easier for you to read so long as they're just on the same time frame over here. Okay. So don't get confused by it too much, but that can kind of help out in regards to most recent price. If you try and go backwards, you'll probably lose yourself. Okay. So that's just splitting this up. You can do, you know, all sorts of crazy different ones, but all said and done. Um, that's just what the layout does. It just breaks it up into sections. Okay. This is an undo button. Okay. So you can basically just go back, go back. Okay. Think of the fast keys. Fast keys are going to help you do this so much quicker overall. Okay. So as over time, just kind of get used to the fast keys. Replay button is huge. It's absolutely huge. You're going to hear me in the masterclass talk about this all the time uh, and, and using this for study and for homework assignments, things like that. Uh, I can't stress it enough. And what it is, is you can go back and you can just take away all of that price. And then the little replay button comes up here. Okay. And you can hit the play button. You can change the speed. Okay. You can make it really slow. Okay, one update every two seconds, half a second, 0.1 second. Okay, so boom. And why this is so helpful is when most people start out trading, they try and chart most recent price. 
And that's like trying to read a book when you don't understand how to like words. Okay. It makes it nearly makes it very difficult to try and imagine what price is going to do when you're not, when you don't have any idea as to how price actually moves and what it's supposed to do. So by actually going back here and hitting the replay button and watching how the markets move is very powerful. So that replay button is absolute gold and I would use, use it as much as you possibly can. Okay. Um, otherwise you're also waiting for real time to play out. So if you're on a four hour chart and you want to see how the four hour charts move, you're literally waiting days for, for price to do anything and actually complete structures. Okay. So, uh, you've got your alert button up here. You can just create alert there instead of clicking this one over here. Okay. Just a different way of doing it. Templates templates are for your indicators. Okay. So in other words, let's say that I've put three different indicators on here and I want to save that template. Okay. I just come in here and I just say save indicator template. You can see here I've got hippo original uh, PDF style and then there are default templates to that trading view has. Okay. That's, that's all templates are so that you can just switch in between different. Maybe you have a strategy with two different indicators and then a different strategy with three other indicators and you can switch in between the two to see if either strategy is playing out. That's a quick way to do it with templates. Okay. Uh, fundamental metrics for stocks, not something that I use, you know, there were you, since we're focused on crypto and Forex here, um, indicators. Okay. This is just where you're going to pick out your indicators. There is a huge assortment of indicators overall. Okay. You've got built-ins. Okay. Which are built into trading view here. You've got candlestick patterns, which is a new one that they just came out with. So basically this highlights what type of candles, uh, candle patterns you're seeing can be very helpful when you're first starting out learning price action. Okay. You've got the public library. These are ones that people create. Okay. You're going to find out the authors that are probably some of the most popular for creating indicators. Okay. And then scripts and probably something you're not going to deal with overall. This is where I save scripts that maybe people have sent me or that I can create myself, but I really don't do that. And then volume profile here. So I don't really mess around with this much. Uh, so, with that being said, I wouldn't worry about it. And then invite only scripts. So this is just only, it means like that I can't take their scripts. They've only invited me into them so I can use them, but I don't have any, I can't save the script. And the script is just basically all the code for that indicator. Okay. So that's a little bit about the indicators here. Um, you can just use the search bar as well. So let's say we go to the public library, we type in RSI and boom, there's an RSI strategy somebody's made. We've got just regular stochastic Connors, just the regular RSI, um, et cetera. And compare. So compare is going to allow you to throw another chart on here. So let's say that we want to compare against, um, the S and P 500. Okay. So we're just going to pick that S and P 500. And now in the orange, we have the S and P 500 here versus Bitcoin. So you can see what the correlation is between the two. Okay. Um, if you want to get rid of it afterwards, you just come up here. You can see SPX 500 USD, Oanda. Go ahead and hit the X button and it's gone. All right. To the left of that, we've got candles. You can choose between bars, hollow candles, hike and a she, line, area, baseline. Basically, I just stick with normal candles, um, but some people like to change it up depending on their strategy. My biggest recommendation is just keep it the same. Don't switch between hike and a she and candles and bars. Just stick with one, develop your strategy on it, get familiar with just that one. Okay. Uh, time of frames over here. Okay. You can see how I have 15 minute, one hour, four hour, one day. Okay. That's because I've starred them off to the right here. So they've become favorites now. And therefore, it just keeps it in a nice bar for me. That way, I don't always have to hit this drop down menu and then come down here and pick it. It just saves me time from going boom, boom, boom. These are my favorite time frames that I switch in between. Okay, you guys will hear me talk about switching in multiples of four. You can tell that I do that 15 minute, one hour, four hour, one day. One day is a little bit more aggressive. You could go 16 hour if you really want to stick with it. I just like the daily. Okay. Over here is where your ticker symbols are at. So this is where we're going to do research on what type of a ticker symbol you want in the chart that you want to pull up. So let's say we want like XRP, USD pairing. Boom. You could type in just XRP and a bunch will come up. If you don't know the ticker symbol, let's try something like Apple. Okay. And so although Apple is not the actual ticker symbol, it's AAPL, um, it will still pop up for you. So you don't have to know the exact ticker symbol in order to find it. Just FYI on that. Okay. So off to the left here, top this drop down bar here. 
Oh, this is uh, basically just like your menu, your menu tab overall. Um, I honestly, you really don't have to come in here very often. Uh, you can just do, you can rename your charts, <clears throat> and, you know. But other than that, really not a whole lot to really have to fix around in here. I don't think there's anything that I've had to change in the past. Okay, so I wouldn't worry about anything in here. Now you've got your drawing tabs over here. Okay, in order to get this little bar here, this is your favorites tab, and you basically just come in here. You click these little arrows here notice that I've got the star there so when I star it so let's star the dot the dot shows up over here now okay so uh, as we come down this is my favorites that I've done this is everything just about everything that we use for Fibonacci um, but we're gonna want to use the trend line here okay we're gonna do the horizontal line the extended line parallel channel those are our favorites in here okay sometimes I use the arrows for diagrams but other than that <clears throat> There's really not much else that we need to use in here, okay? So that's the first one there. You can star those first four. This will help you from having to search through all of these tabs, okay? So the next one down is this is where most of our Fibonacci stuff is actually going to be at here, okay? So we're going to ignore. We don't use any of the pitchforks, the GAN boxes, nothing like that. We've got the Fib retracement, the trend-based Fib extension, okay? Um... I also use the fib time zone, but you're probably not going to need to know that uh, for a little bit here. And then the trend based fib time, that as well, you probably won't need to have either one of those starred. Okay. Uh, so just the, the fib retracement and the trend based fib extension on this second, third tab down. Now we've got our brush. Okay. I love using the brush, it makes it easy for just drawing on things. And then the rectangle. Okay. Other than that, we really don't need to use anything else that's in here. Okay. Coming down to the next one here, we've got text. That's important to be able to write and make notes for yourself. Okay, we've got the call out button, which allows you to uh, target something and then call it out and then type into it. Okay, and we've got the price label. Okay, other than that, we don't need anything else. So just go ahead and start those three things. It's text, call out, price label. This is going to put it all on this bar up here so that you can focus your attention on just these tools and not having to search for them. It'll be really nice. Okay. Next, we've got actual Elliott Wave um, counts. So we've got Elliott Wave Impulse Wave. We're going to want that. Okay, You can put the triangle on there. Elliott Wave Triple Combo, the WXYXZ, the ABC, the WXY. Okay, So those are all going to be uh, starred for you there. Everything else we can probably leave for now. Okay, And then the next one down here, we've got, we're have got. we definitely going to want the long position and the short position tool. We're going to want the date range and the price range. This will help us with some measuring some stuff and giving us some time projections overall. Okay, but other than that, those are the only four that we need. So long position, short position, date, range, price range. Underneath that are just icons. You really don't need to use these unless you want to be artistic and creative. Um, the measure, we don't need to use that. The zoom in, probably not going to use that. This magnet tool I do use on higher time frames, usually daily and above. And what it does is it allows me to use my tool like this, and it will clip it right onto the top of a candle. Okay, so notice it literally just. So I don't have to be hovering over it, but it'll go to each one there. Okay, so that helps me on higher time frames so that I'm really precise and I'm not. I don't have any discrepancies in where I'm pulling my my pivots from. Okay, so. You can lock the uh, stay in drawing mode. Uh, that kind of gets annoying or confusing a little bit just because it keeps you on your tool and whatnot. Okay. And then we've also got lock all drawing tools. Don't really need to use that. You can hide everything. So notice everything that I've drawn here. We can hide it. So if you just want to look at the blank chart, that's a great way to do it. Now, however, when you go to go draw something, something again, it's all going to pop back up. Okay. So keep that in mind. It's really just to kind of look at the blank chart and then bring it back on. Look at the blank chart, bring it back on, okay? And then this button down here is the trash, and it goes ahead and it deletes everything on the entire screen. So boom, if we want to just get rid of it all, we can do that. Now let's say that we made that mistake. We want to go back. We can hit Control-Z, right? Or we can hit the Undo button here. So again, fast keys are going to make it a lot easier overall. Um, so it's worth trying to learn those, okay? So that's everything for TradingView here, basically setting it up. Uh, off to the right side, just to do a recap on the things that are the most important. Off to the right, watch lists and alerts. Watch lists are going to keep you organized on just the assets that you want to trade and watch. Okay. And that way you're not searching for them and having to filter through a big long list. Alerts 
are going to be able to help you keep track of key levels. You can record your videos and publish your ideas and you can publish them privately by hitting the lock button in the bottom right. And you can keep track of your own counts that way so that you're not losing them, uh, trying to save them and getting confused with that. You can take a screenshot and you can save them somewhere else as well and save the URL for it. You can go into settings. You can change the background color and we can change the candle colors and the, the watermark are the main things that we change inside of that. Okay. Uh, save your thing, save your chart here. You can split your layout into two or four different charts. You have the undo button, the replay button cuts off price so that you can replay price action and understand the market flow better. Okay. You can set alerts here again. Templates are just for your indicators. So this will save your indicator settings. Let's say that you want to develop multiple strategies with different indicators. You can save those templates. Financial markets, you're not going to need to worry about your indicators is where you choose your indicators at. Typically, you're going to be out of the public library. And then you've got your uh, compare chart here so that you can compare like the S&P 500 against the Bitcoin or you can do currencies compared against each other. Your candles, you're just going to always stick to one candle. Don't switch in between. Your time frame, you can go ahead and set stars to make them your favorites to make your list here. Make sure that they're in multiples of four and you want to always stay in that same sequence. So don't go in between from like one hour to two hour, 50 minutes to 30 minute. Always stay within the same frequency, either four hour intervals or, or at least two hour intervals. Okay. And then over here, we've now set up our entire favorite bar here. So this should really only be the tool, the only bar that you need for drawing and you can ignore this side over here. Okay. Um, if you want to get rid of that toolbar, I didn't mention this before, but you have your favorite toolbar down here. So you can have that up, but if it's not marked, then it's going to go away. Okay. So make sure that's marked down there so that we have our favorite toolbar. All right. So that's everything for trading view on how to set this all up. And then we're going to dive into some of the functionalities of, of the tools. I'll show you how to use them. And then I'll do a separate video too on the strategy tester and demo account. Okay.